Hi, how you doing? Justin here, and today I'm going to run you through the new version 2 of the Justin Guitar Beginner Song Course app. It's been over a year now, it's got loads and loads of great feedback, but there are a few things that we wanted to make improvements on, and we're now covering the whole beginner's course in the app, and we've got some really funky new tools that I'm sure you're going to enjoy. So let's go and have a close-up look inside the app. So you can see here the little teacher's hat down in the bottom left hand corner is illuminated. That means that we're on the learning pathway, which is where you're going to get all of the lessons from. Now you'll see there that we've got all of the stages one to nine on the left hand side. And within each one of those, we've got all of these lessons that you can scroll through on the right hand side. Now you're going to see there's a little checkbox there on the right hand side, the far right of each different lesson or item. And we really want to check those through as we go along on the course, okay? So by touching that very first one, the watch intro video, if we click on that, that'll go to a YouTube video of me explaining the learning pathway. So when we come back now, you can see that that little box is now ticked off. So we're ready to go on to the next one. So we go through and we're going to learn how to play an A chord. Maybe you know that one already. You, can, you don't have to actually watch the whole video. Just click on the link and it, it gets you through. And so on. We've got some other videos on, on the strumming and all of that sort of stuff. And if you keep going, you come to song exercise. Now, this one says play three easy songs with A and D chords. And there are now three checkboxes. So the idea here is that you would learn at least three songs using just A and D. So if we click on that one now, we've got a list here of songs that just use the A and the D chords. Now these ones are slightly simplified to the full-on karaoke player. We don't have some of the options like the, the tuners, the, the capos and stuff like that available. It's a little simplified, but that's good because we just want to keep it simple for now. If we say uh, click on Born in the USA, if we play that through, we can, or rather we click it, and we can see that we can do it at normal tempo, slow or really slow. So if you're really new to it, you probably want really slow, but let's keep with the normal tempo for now. Hit that big play button, and we get a little countdown, and we're off. And the song is starting through. It's going to play through. I'm going to let it run for just a second so that it'll, uh, uh, we can actually mark it off. I just stop the press on the screen somewhere it's stopped. And you can see on the right hand side now, did you learn it? And you can either select rocked it, getting there or needs work. So we're going to say that we rocked it. And then we're back in that menu there. We can see the rest of the songs. Now we really want to do three different songs now uh, in order to get through this little stage. So we can just play through this one a little bit as well, just so that uh, it'll allow us to mark it off. I think if you just jump on it, it doesn't do that. So yeah, we rocked that one as well. If we go back and check now, you can see that two of the boxes are checked. We probably want the third one to be able to complete this little section. So let's uh, do a little bit of Lucy Hale as well here. So three, two, one, or one, two, three, four, actually. Used to be three, two, one, but that's another thing that we've changed. So it now does count like it does in normal music where you count one, two, three, four, and it starts. There we go. I rocked that one as well. So now when we go back to the learning pathway, you can see that we've got that one ticked off properly as well. And you can see that it's got the little record icon, that's meaning that it's uh, uh, to do with the songs. We've got the little video icon there, which is a video lesson for one minute changes. And then we've got one minute changes with A and D. Now this one is for practicing your A to D chords. Uh, again, it gives you a little rundown on the exercise. The idea is that you're going to play A to D chord uh, over and over again for one whole minute. So I just hit play, give you a little countdown, and then you start and you'd now be counting your way through how many changes you can do from the D to the A. That's the idea. Okay, so you just count. You have to count manually yourself. It doesn't hear you. Uh, the app doesn't hear you. You have to be counting. So each time you change to a chord, you're going to number the chord. So you're just going to, you know, strum the chord, count one, strum the next chord, two, and so on. And I'm going to speed up through this so we don't have to jibber, hear me gibbering and jabbering on for a whole minute. At the end of that one minute, it's asking you to scroll through and select how many chord changes you managed to do. And because I'm a complete ninja, I'm going to put down that I did 65 because that's a lot of different chord changes. So and I'm going to click complete exercise. There we go. And that one is marked off. Now, uh, we've got another exercise type that's a, a new one, which is called these chord beat exercises with A and D. Now, the idea here is it's a little bit like one minute changes, but really 
what you're aiming for in a real song is to play it consistently the changes not just like as fast as you can where some are a bit slower than others here this exercise 60 chords per minute would be uh, obviously one change every second so this is giving you a kind of a backing and you need to be doing your chord changes on that second it's, it's quite obvious when it starts how to do that and you're just really playing each chord once it's not a song but it feels much more like a, a song would in the real world so spend a little bit of time on this one you can see we've got 20 40 and 60 so obviously if you're only doing 20 changes a minute you could still work on that in your one minute changes if you're doing 20 uh, you could be doing the 20 chords per minute in the changes so it's just, just like a slower version but once you're up around 60 or higher then you definitely want to be trying to do this one where you're really having to do the, the changes in time so if I just hit start on that one now again here we go and it started so we just strum D A strum the D strum the A strum the D strum the A and that's it it's just changing between those two so it really is much like a one minute changes exercise but it's really forcing you to think about your time as well so um, that's it um, and complete exercise in this particular case but they're those kind of exercises you probably want to do them more than once I think you should be doing those fairly regularly now the idea with the learning path is that you tick off everything as you go along through the course that's what you should be doing ideally but you'll see here the one minute changes with A, D and E is currently locked because we haven't learned our E chord yet. We've only learned A and D. So we could either go back and learn our E chord, watch that little video there and learn how to play the E chord. Um, and if we've watched that, we've now learned our A, D and E. And you see now that one minute changes is unlocked for A, D and E. However, we also got a lot of feedback from people saying, hey, well, I'm already, you know, halfway through the course. I don't want to have to watch all of these videos, right? So we've introduced a new thing. If you go to settings and you go to edit learning path, you can now choose how far through the course it is that you want to go. And simply by pressing one of these complete buttons on the right hand side, it will mark all of the lessons before that one as complete. Okay, it's a really handy thing. If you want to unlock the whole lot, you just go to the end of stage nine, hit the last one, the last complete button, and it'll unlock all of the lessons. However, the disadvantage of that is that you don't, you're no longer kind of following with where you are in the path. And, you know, I don't think that's the best idea. Most times you shouldn't need to be using this, but if you get frustrated that you want to get through a particular bit or you're halfway through my beginner course already online and you want to use it, then you'll hopefully find that feature uh, pretty useful. The one other type of lesson that you're going to find is the finger style exercise, which is right up in stage eight. So I am going to go to the learning path and un unlock the whole lot just so I don't have to worry about um, getting through all of those things. So I'm done on that. And then I go to stage eight and I'll go to finger style pattern one. OK, so if we go to slow, uh, keep it nice and easy. If we start this exercise, you'll see it's just a really nice, easy way of seeing your and practicing your finger style pattern. So we'll just press play. Okay, finger style patterns is really, really important is the repetition. You want to be doing it over and over again and trying to make sure that it's in time. And the idea here, it's showing the thumb and the different finger numbers on the strings. And you just want to be playing along with this for as long as you can stand it. The longer you can keep doing it, the better. And if you can try and train yourself to keep going through it and then trying to distract yourself. So once you can do the exercise confidently, see if you can continue to play along with the app while you think about something else. Because in the real world, when you're playing a song, you've got more to think about than the finger style pattern. You're going to have chords to do. You might be singing as well. So you really want those the, the finger picking part to be completely automated if you can. So let's have a look at the playing the songs now, kind of karaoke mode, I guess. We hit the little guitar down the bottom there. Um, you'll see that all of the songs are divided by the different stages and they just relate to the various stages on the beginner's course. And there's a playground as well where you get all of the songs that you might find fit the stages and a bunch of songs that kind of don't fit exactly with the stages but are really good fun songs that you might want to check out as well. But let's have a check out of some of the features there. I'm just going to go into it randomly into uh, stage four. We, Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. Perfect song for this kind of thing. So if I just click on that, it's going to load the song up. A couple of things, first of all, starting over on the right hand side, let me go through the different things that you can do. First of all, you've got the tempo, so you can slow it down or speed it up depending on what you want to do. And you've got a reset tempo button, which will take it back to close to the original tempo. Uh, at the top, we've got the play button on the second uh, along the top, we've got the chord. So you can go through and click the different chord buttons in all different colors there. And it'll show you both a picture of me playing the chord and a little chord diagram next to it. If you 
go for the strumming there, you can see a suggested strumming pattern. And you can really, it's pretty free. You should be able to try whatever strumming pattern you feel like, but there's a suggested one there. Um, you can hit the start button, it'll actually play it. And you can sit there and practice along with that as well. If you want some extra strumming practice, you just touch the pick to stop it again as well. Um, and there's a link there, learn this strum pattern with justinguitar.com. If you click on that, it'll take you to a lesson on, on strumming those particular patterns. Um, in this particular song, there's a finger picking pattern as well. So if you click on picking, it gives you a suggested finger picking pattern that you might want to practice along with the song as well. So really, really useful kind of uh, different approaches that you might like to try for playing this particular tune. Um, if we go back to the play uh, screen again, couple of other things that I should mention. In the top right hand corner, the little lines with the dots on it, that's your different options. And you can choose the percussion. You can either have, if I click on the drums, you can see you've got none, claps, drums, or metronome. I mean, drums is probably what most people are gonna want most of the time. Uh, for guitar, you can either have none, which will just wipe the guitar, which is probably what you wanna be using more often than not, so you can really hear uh, your own guitar part. But you can also have simple strums and strumming patterns. So if you think it'll be helpful to hear the actual strumming pattern or a simple pattern as well, you can choose those uh, options from that. The vocals is what's going to play the melody of the song, assuming that you're not going to sing. If you are going to sing, you probably want to turn that off. Uh, you know, I like the organ, but you could really, you could choose any one of those ones. Uh, bass, you probably want to have on all of the time, uh, but you can turn it on, off if you're a bass player. You've also got fretboard and lyrics. So turning the fretboard off just move, removes the um, chords from the right hand side of the screen. Uh, if you're a more experienced guitar player or you're singing along and you want extra screen real estate, then you might turn that off. Turning the lyrics off, not really sure why you'd want to do that, but if you did want to turn the lyrics off, uh, you can do that there as well. Now, the only other thing to explain on this page is the little capo uh, that we've got now. So if you touch the little capo, which is on the left hand side of the neck there, it kind of jumps up onto the neck with a number. And that number would be where you would place the capo. And what it's doing is changing the tuning of the track. So if you were finding this song difficult to sing in the original key that it's shown on the on the track here, you could choose to put the capo further up the fretboard, use a capo yourself and play along that way. Really good for you know adjusting the keys of the songs to fit your own voice. That's the point of that one. You can either hit the, click, the tick button, which will uh, confirm it and move the key of the track. When you wanna get rid of the capo, just click the X and it'll take it back to the standard key. So then you're just gonna hit the play button, two, three, four, and off we go. Here we go, what an all-time classic. With, with these sounds as well, it's like even better than it's ever been. Gotta love this track. It's actually, if you don't know it, there's a Travis version of this song which is really, really simple, all acoustic version. Uh, it's the one that I'd recommend that you check out. But anyway, so lots of really great features there on the player now as well. Last few things to take you through. The middle button at the bottom is your guitar tuner. Now you can choose either automatic, which will automatically detect the note and then tell you whether to tune up or down. If you've just restrung or, what, or your strings are really out of tune, you might want to choose the manual mode and then select which string you're tuning. So that's useful for the, for the tuning up. And you can also select sound, which will, as you touch the tuning peg, will play that note. Uh, not sure why many of you would want to use that, but it is a useful feature uh, uh, in certain circumstances. Um, the next icon along the bottom is the little uh, profile icon, little person, uh, where you can add a picture and the type of guitar. There's a few interesting things in the works for that, so you might want to check this section out a little bit later on. There might be some new features coming along. And last but not least is the settings section. So it arrives on the general tab. Uh, we got restore purchases. If you've got a new device and you wanted to restore your purchase on that. Suggest a song, pretty obvious. If there's a song you'd love to see in the app, please let us know. Support and feedback will send an email directly to the developer Developers. It's fine to email me, but I have to usually just forward stuff to them because I don't understand the technical complexities of the app as well as they do. So uh, this uh, now if you click that, you can email them directly and lots of friendly, helpful people over at Mesopia to help you out. Um, you've got the privacy policy, which is absolutely thrilling reading if you're looking for an next novel or something to uh, check out. And then we've got the edit learning path um, 
which we discussed earlier. Up the top there, we've got the social tab, uh, which has links to my YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and justinguitar.com, which I'm hoping you're all familiar with, and also following Musopio, who are the developers of the app, if you hadn't caught that already, uh, their Facebook and Twitter pages. We've got more apps. Uh, we've got my Blues Licks, the Yuki Oki, which is a great app for ukulele players made by Musopio as well that I was involved with a little bit. Uh, my Time Trainer, Metronome, Interval Ear Trainer, and any, any other apps that I've got going on, you'll find on there. And last but not least, the legal document. I mean, who doesn't love reading the legal documents on every app that you purchase? So I know that you're going to love that update as well. I'm sure you're going to really love this new updated version of the Justin Guitar Beginner Song Course, and we've got even more exciting stuff in the works as well. So make sure you're signed up to the newsletter to hear about it first. I'll see you for plenty more lessons and songs very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.